In early 2013, a bunch of Cartoon Network's originals were available to stream on Netflix. As much as I loved the Cartoon Planet block for introducing me to Cartoon Network's classics, most of my fondest memories with these shows were actually from Netflix. Whenever I wasn't watching Cartoon Network or Boomerang, I was watching these shows on Netflix. Some shows that were on there were The Powerpuff Girls, Chowder, Regular Show, Adventure Time, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Camp Laszlo, Cow and Chicken, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, Johnny Bravo, Ed and Eddie, and many more. While Netflix didn't have the complete series of these shows, they had at least the first few seasons of these shows on their service. However, in mid-2014, Netflix did the unthinkable. Not only did they start removing shows like Cow and Chicken and Johnny Bravo, but they also added new seasons for shows that stayed on the platform. But there was a catch. In order to add the other seasons, Netflix removed the existing seasons in place of the new ones. For example, Season 1 and 2 of Camp Laszlo were removed and replaced with Season 3 and 4. While it was great to have the new seasons, it was still upsetting that they had to get rid of the older seasons as a result. And about a year later, most of the shows that I grew up watching would later be removed from the service, with shows like The Powerpuff Girls and Chowder being the only survivors until they eventually got removed in late 2016. Seeing all my favorite shows being removed one by one made me learn a huge valuable lesson. Streaming services may be a great and easy way to watch content, but whether it be due to licensing issues or disastrous mergers, the content on the platforms might not stay forever, and there's nothing you can really do about it. Despite having all the content on streaming, you don't actually own them, you only have the rights to access them. Even if you bought it digitally on Amazon, they'll still likely be taken down at some point. Not only that, but it can be pretty hard to keep track on which shows are on what platform especially since not every family has those particular services. Which is why I always like to resort to physical media, such as DVDs and Blu-rays. Physical formats may take up space in your house, but at least you're guaranteed to have the content for the rest of your life. I've collected many DVDs and Blu-rays over the years, with no sign of stopping anytime soon. However, when it comes to animation, not everything gets released physically, and it's especially true when you live in a certain country. For some reason, a lot of cartoons have better releases in other countries, which is a problem because I live in North America, and I'm only allowed to view content made specifically for my region. If I was going to collect some of my favorite cartoons on home video, I probably should consider looking into some out-of-country releases, and if I was going to do that, then it would be mandatory for me to get a region-free player. In early 2020, before the COVID pandemic, I was in the hospital and got diagnosed with lupus, and because my parents felt very sorry for me, they bought me that region-free Blu-ray player that I always wanted. So we donated our Panasonic Blu-ray player that we had for almost a decade, and in its place was this region-free modded Sony Blu-ray player. And here it is. This is my um, Sony region-free modded Blu-ray player. And so yeah, so I've been using this for about um, let's see, two years, because I got it in 2020, and I'll just unplug the thing so I'll show you what the back looks like. And yeah, so this thing has been working out great. I've been using it to watch, you know, like Region 1 DVDs like Spongebob, some of the Region 4 DVDs like my regular show ones, I mean, they work pretty fine. Even the PAL ones. So here's just what the back looks like. And somewhere there should be like a model number somewhere in the back. I don't see it. Maybe I'll have to. Maybe I'll show under. Yes, this is this is model BDP S1700. So basically what this eBay seller does is that he refurbishes these Blu-ray players and he modifies them to play all six DVD regions and all six Blu-ray regions. Um, essentially, um, he basically makes this this powerful Blu-ray player. Um, if you want to buy it, it's actually still up. Um, the listing where I bought it from is actually still up on eBay. Maybe I'll put a link in the description for this particular model. There are some better ones out there, like there's one that actually upscales to 4K and also ones you know that you know play Blu-ray 3D. This is just a standard run-of-the-mill Blu-ray player. It just plays 
region free DVDs and Blu-rays and converts any PAL discs to NTSC discs and that's pretty much it. So if you want to get any international DVDs out there, like ones from out of your home country, um, I think it's mandatory to get a region free Blu-ray player just so you know, you, you'll be able to access um, you know, all of the international discs. Over the years, Warner Brothers Home Entertainment has done an extremely poor job at releasing Cartoon Network's fantastic shows, both old and new. Only a select few shows have received complete series releases in the US, with the rest either having just a few season releases, compilation discs that have a random assortment of episodes, or nothing at all, nothing at all. To make matters worse, there's even some shows that have little to no releases in the US that actually have releases in Australia. Enter Mad Men Entertainment, an Australian DVD manufacturer who got the home video license to release Cartoon Network's shows around the mid 2000s. They've given these shows way better treatment than Warner Brothers ever would. Not only do they have full season releases of certain shows, but they also have complete series releases of shows that you won't find in North America. This baffles me as to why Australia is so lucky to get all these releases. However, this might not be the case anymore, as I recently heard that Mad Men Entertainment just lost the Cartoon Network license recently. So if you want any of their DVDs and Blu-rays, make sure you buy them before they're all gone. Alright, so these are all of the Cartoon Network Australian DVDs and Blu-rays that I have so far. Um, Mad Men Entertainment has made more of them than just these. Um, like for example, I know there's a Blu-ray set for Over the Garden Wall, and I know there's also some season sets for Steven Universe on both DVD and Blu-ray. Um, and there's also some, you know, DVDs that I um, definitely really want to get my hands on. Like for example, there's a, a DVD release of the Powerpuff Girls Special Dance Pants from 2014. And then there is also, um, um, there's also a Season 2 set for Johnny Bravo. Um, as well as a season one set of Camp Laszlo. But I think the the one DVD I want to get the most that's from Mad Men Entertainment, it would be the Dexter's Laboratory Collected Experiments DVD set, which has uh, the complete series, including the movie. So if anyone from Australia is watching this video, um, do you think you could help me get that set? Anyways, folks, let's just talk about the Cartoon Network sets that I already have, starting with the regular show DVDs. Alright, so here are the regular show DVDs. So, basically, in the United States of America, Warner Brothers only released uh, two season sets for regular show. There was regular show, the complete first and second season, and regular show, the complete third season. And then there is also a uh, regular show, The Movie, which I also got. So just, just those three DVDs. Now, I know they've made a lot of, like, compilation, um, you know, discs for, like, just, that have just, like, a random assortment of regular show episodes. But if you wanted to get the seasons um, and the movie, these were the only sets to get. But in Australia... Mad Men Entertainment released the rest of the seasons, um, you know, as separate, you know, season sets. So, of course, the, the Teal DVD is regular show The Complete Fourth Season. Then there's regular show The Complete Fifth Season, which is like in this orange-yellow color. And then The Complete Sixth Season, which is in purple. The Complete Seventh Season, which is in a dark green. And then uh, season eight, the last season, which is in this purplish pink color. So yeah, so um, here are the here are the DVDs aligned, and I guess for I guess for the sake of comparison, um, let's let's put the U.S. season sets by the side. And of course, the movie, because why not? And I mean, I mean, the, I mean, it looks all right. I mean, it does. I mean, the spine on the U.S. You know, the artwork on the U.S. spines are different from the Australian ones, but that's okay. Because when you compare uh, the U.S. DVDs to the Australian ones. Um, Basically, the Australian versions, they try to match that of the, of the U.S. ones. 
And you can definitely see that, you know, from like the artwork. Um, the only real difference is that, um, you know, you have like the ratings because, you know, in Australia, they have a rating on the front um, of the DVDs. Um, and of course, you know, like the logos and and it also tells you like what how many discs are in that set. Also, not to mention that this isn't a clear case. Well, in the U.S. one, it's in a white case. And, and of course, since this is an Australian release, the the all the legal information and you know you know on the formats and all that that's that's different on this one. It's kind of hard to read on the U.S. DVDs. Uh, same for the season three set. Uh, but but they're all like easier to read basically uh, the back shows you like what episodes are on the set Then when you get a close-up um, it shows you like the aspect ratio the soundtrack subtitles the origin and the disc format and Of course its region so basically if you want to, if you want to know the difference between a, a US DVD and Australian DVD um, Basically on the back you'll either have this region one icon or if it's an Australian or New Zealand release um, they're region four and besides that there's also the difference in just um, you know having the warning label on both the front and on the spine because normally they would have like the rating on the back like for example um, if you wanted to know the rating of regular show you'll only find it on the back and of course it says PG while on the back and the spine and the front um, they say PG and of course the reason why the Australian regular show DVDs are in a clear case is because if you open it up of course you got the discs which are very similar to the um, to the US releases but instead of having a little, instead of having like a little pamphlet that shows you what episodes are on each disc, um, they actually um, they actually made a back for the cover, which actually shows you what episodes are on each disc. And of course, if you um, take off the last disc, um, you'll see screenshots, you know, from you know from the episodes from that season. So. This was season four of regular show. I'll show you the other seasons. So, and I guess I'll also talk about you know my thoughts on these seasons. Uh, season four is great. Uh, season five. A lot of people don't really like season five and six because they kind of you know solely focused on the more romance side of Mordecai, and I mean that kind of bothered me too, but. I don't know. I still think seasons five and six are okay. So that was season five. Um, season six. Again, another season that a lot of people didn't like, but I thought it was fine. Here's the episodes, the discs, more screenshots from episodes. Of course, now we get to season seven. So yeah, as, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to, uh, season seven, uh, good season, I guess. 
Um, last up, we have a regular show, the complete eighth season. Um, I'm not sure if this is a popular opinion or anything, because I'm pretty sure a lot of people might disagree with the statement, but I never really liked the episodes where they were in space. I don't know why. I guess... I mean, I'm sure if I... I mean, it's been a while since I've seen Season 8 of Regular Show, so I feel like if I watched it again, um, it probably... My experience probably would have been a lot better, especially since, you know, I was waiting, you know, a, you know, a while for these shows, you know, for the final episodes to air, so maybe it was just, you know, just me, like, being a bit too impatient and, you know, being disappointed and all that. But, yeah, I... Well, I, I was just really just like, like every time I was just watching, you know, like season eight, I was just really just wanting just, I just want, I just want them to go back on Earth or, 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 or just like do the finale, like at, at long last. Cause, cause even though I'm not a big fan of season eight because of the whole space aspect kind of turned me off a bit. Um, I did love the series finale. I feel like it, I feel like it ended regular show on an awesome note. So yeah, what's interesting about all the other seasons, they're all three disc sets, um, except for season eight, which because it doesn't have as many episodes as the others, um, this one's only like um, a two disc set. I'm not going to put all the discs in, so I'm just going to, I'm only putting in like disc three of season four, but for every single, so the trend with every single Australian Cartoon Network DVD and Blu-ray is that you're always greeted with the Mad Men Entertainment logo since they distributed it. They distributed the series in Australia and they, you know, and the Cartoon Network logo because Cartoon Network is the, you know, the studio that made regular show. So here's what the menu looks like. Um, it's trying to replicate the, the U.S. DVDs, but instead of having um, an ambient music, like, like ambient sounds like the U.S. DVDs, the Australian DVDs just play the credits theme for regular show, and of course, I I have it on mute because you know I you know I want you, you know, like to listen, you know, like to my voice, not get distracted. But anyways, um, they do things a little bit differently. Like for example, um, so it's it's so the backgrounds is just the same. Um, the only the only real differences on all the DVD sets is that they have different screenshots from each season. Um, they have a different color depending on like the box of the season set um, and of course you know like the name so here's what the episode menu looks like looks fine for what it is and might it might be the same as the US ones I'm not entirely sure so yeah so that was so that's what um, you know the season four menu looks like and and all the other seasons have the exact same layout so all right, now let's talk about the pros and cons of these regular show DVDs. Uh, the first pro is that, um, for the most part, you get the complete series. Um, because Warner Brothers never released uh, the other seasons in the U.S. So the fact that um, that these Australian DVDs exist, it, you know, was just amazing. And honestly, one of the main reasons why I even wanted to get a region-free Blu-ray player because I mean, regular show—it's such a great show. I love watching regular show, and even though you know it's it's available to stream on HBO Max and Hulu, um, I just really I, I like collecting physical media. So I just feel like you know, for a series as important to me, um, that I feel like I should collect, you know, the the entire series physically. And I'm glad that these um, official DVD sets exist. So pro number two is that not only do you get the episodes from the show, but you also get the shorts that were released from these seasons. Um, I think season eight is the only set that, or, or season seven and eight, they're the only sets that advertise the shorts. So I'm assuming that they're the only, you know, like DVDs, you know, to actually have the shorts. But I'm pretty sure um, the other seasons probably have those shorts. They just probably weren't advertised. Um, another pro is that, so when I bought these DVDs, I was, I had a few worries, and one of them was just the fact that, um, are these censored? Because one, th because one thing about regular show is, is that, um, it wasn't able to, like, it was able to get away with the, 
um, you know, with the U.S. standards, but not so much for like other countries. And so, of course, you know, there are there's videos out there, you know, comparing, you know, like, you know, like you, scenes that you can find on the U.S. to like scenes that were like either cut or changed in like countries like the U.K. and even Australia. Um, but as far as I'm aware, um, all of the episodes on these on these DVD sets are uncut. So, so if you're worried about any episodes potentially being censored, I'm pretty sure they're all uncut. Like, so they're exactly like the U.S. you know airings of the episodes. So that's nice. Um, another pro is that the the video quality itself. I mean, it's not the best, especially considering that regular show. was produced in HD, but I think the video quality, I mean, for what it is, it's pretty decent. I mean, especially since, I mean, you're probably going to be watching, you know, these DVDs from a faraway view. So some of the, so some of the DVD artifacts that you like to call it, they probably wouldn't be as noticeable when you, you know, when you're like watching it from a faraway view. So yeah, so the video quality is pretty decent. Uh, the packaging, I also like how they try to replicate the U.S., you know, like the U.S. releases of regular show. But they're also still kind of unique in a way. Like, for example, they're in clear cases. They have all these different artwork and different colors. Um, and I also like the artwork on all of them. Now, the presentation is also pretty decent. They're trying to replicate the U.S. releases. And not to mention that the layout on the menus are all the same. Just with different colors, different screenshots, etc. And the last pro for this set is that they're in the NTSC format. So if you're, you know, like worried, you know, that these episodes would play at a slightly higher pitch, slightly faster speed, uh, don't worry. They play exactly like you know, you know, like you know, like it originally aired in the U.S. So they're all in the NTSC format. So I talked about all the pros for the regular show sets. Now let's talk about the cons for the regular show DVDs. So the first con is that one episode is missing from these DVDs, and that is the season four episode. That's my television. Honestly, I'm not sure why that was the case. Maybe the episode was banned in Australia, or maybe they just simply forgot. But for whatever reason, that episode. Was just it's just not on the season four set, and I don't know why. Um, another con is that besides the shorts, there aren't any other bonus contents. So like no audio commentaries, you know, like no animatics, just nothing. Also, another con for these DVDs is that they don't have subtitles. It's probably not like a huge issue since I'm pretty sure most people don't put the subtitles on. But it's still kind of a shame that you know these DVDs don't have subtitles like the U.S. DVDs do. So overall, I'd say the regular show DVDs are worth picking up if you already have seasons one, two, and three. Next up are my cow and chicken DVDs. So these came out only in Australia. Like in the U.S., we never got any uh, official releases of cow and chicken, um, unless I think there might have been like one episode that might have been on some random. Like compilation disc, but besides that, there weren't any real, like, like cow and chicken DVDs, like at all. So the fact that these Australian cow and chicken DVDs exist is just mind blowing. Um. Anyways, um, let's take a look at the discs themselves. Hmm. Um. Anyways, here's what the covers of these DVDs look like. Uh, these are probably the oldest Australian Cartoon Network DVDs I have, especially since they have the the previous Cartoon Network logo and the previous Mad Men Entertainment DVD logo. Of course, you have a list of episodes, everything else. Um, also, one thing to note is that the Cow and Chicken DVDs are made in the PAL format, unlike the regular show DVDs. So when you open it up, um, of course this is in a clear case, so the back cover is going to show you what episodes are on each disc. And then here's the discs themselves. So we've got disc 1 and disc 2. Of course when you open it up, it shows you the other episodes. 
And in case if anyone's wondering if the I Am Weasel episodes are on these sets, yes, yes, they are. Um, I know that they also released um, a like they also released a volume one set for I Am Weasel that has that has like the first few episodes from Count Chicken season one. Um, and I think it was called like I Am Weasel Volume One. I I once saw that on eBay selling for like a hundred dollars. Um, I did find that release to be a bit odd, especially since, you know, like, why, I mean, why buy that I Am Weasel DVD when you can get, you know, like, those episodes on the Cow and Chicken sets? Um, unfortunately, um, even though Mad Men Entertainment released DVD sets for Cow and Chicken, they only made seasons one and two. Um, cause Cow and Chicken had four seasons throughout its run. And the only way to get the other two seasons physically would be those those really rare Thailand DVDs of Cow and Chicken. Of course, here's season two. Here's what the back looks like. And then when you open it up, it just shows you, you know, what episodes are on this are on the discs. And of course, when you open up uh, disc two, you get the same artwork of Cow and Chicken from the Season 1 set. So when I saw these DVDs on eBay, um, they were pretty much an impulse buy. When I first saw uh, Season 1, I mean, I wanted to get that so badly because it's been it's been years since I've seen Cow and Chicken. And I mean, I mean, it was a show that, it wasn't one of my favorite Cartoon Network shows, but it was definitely a show that I really liked as a kid. So, um, I mean, it would have been great to at least have have the show physically. Um, even though Mad Men only released seasons one and two, I mean, that's okay. At least I own half of the show. Um, and of course, um, a couple days after I bought season one of Cow and Chicken, there was another listing that showed up that had both season one and season two. And of course, I wanted to get season two so badly since I haven't seen it. I mostly only seen season one. So I bought that as well. And as a result, I actually have two copies of Cow and Chicken Season 1. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with my extra copy. Maybe I could do some sort of giveaway, or maybe I'll sell it. I don't really know. I I'm, I'm just going to keep this for now. But enough said, um, let's take a look at the menus for these Cow and Chicken sets. So here's the menu for Season 1. And here's what the episode menu looks like. For some reason, they don't tell you, like, the name of the episodes. They just show you just the number of, of, of when these episodes are placed. Alright, so pros and cons for the Cow and Chicken DVDs. Uh, the first pro is that, well, it's Cow and Chicken on DVD. I mean, that, I mean that's so awesome, because, like, um, I might have already said that earlier, but Cow and Chicken was one of those shows that I watched... You know, as a kid, whether they were airing reruns on, you know, Cartoon Network, Boomerang, or even on Netflix, the first season was available on Netflix. But unfortunately, um, the show hasn't had any, like, like, it's hard to watch the show nowadays because um, there's currently no streaming service that has Cow and Chicken right now. It's not on Boomerang, it's not on HBO Max, not on Hulu or anything. Um, the only way to officially view the show would be if you bought the episodes on YouTube or on iTunes. And it really makes me hope that they'll make some sort of complete series set for Cow and Chicken soon, just like they did uh, with the Foster's Home and Edda and Eddie set. Um, another pro, and this only goes for season one, the first nine episodes are regular pitched, so they play um, as normal. Um, another another pro that is actually exclusive to season two is the video quality. The video quality, since since Cow and Chicken was produced in stereo definition, the video quality is I mean pretty good. And I mean, considering that you know this is a '90s cartoon. Um, another reason I like about both DVDs are the packaging and the presentation. I mean, I mean of course the regular DVD keep case. You know that you know that the discs are housed in. They're great, and I also love the artwork on the on the boxes. 
Um, and the menus look pretty decent, even though they're, you know, they use the same layout. Um, another pro for Season 2 only is that subtitles are included in that set. So now I talked about some of the pros for the Count Chicken DVDs. Now let's talk about the cons. So the first con is that the pilot is not included on any of these sets. So, in 1995, there was a pilot episode for Cow and Chicken called No Smoking. It aired on What a Cartoon. I'm betting that the reason why it's not on any of these sets is was actually because the episode was banned shortly after it aired because of its heavy references to smoking and cigarettes and all that. Um, another con, and it only goes for Season 1, is that the video quality... While the video quality on Season 1 is not bad, it is a little questionable because, for some reason, some episodes... Some episodes look faded than others, and I'm kind of glad they fixed that for the season two set, because like yeah, because the colors on the on the episodes they all look the same, but for season one some some look faded than others, and I'm not a big fan of that. Even though it's not too noticeable, it's, it's it was definitely a little weird when I was you know like skipping two episodes back to back. Um, another con, and that might be the biggest con for these DVDs, is that, so the first nine episodes of Cow and Chicken, they play at normal speed, but episodes 10, 11, 12, and 13 of season 1, as well as the entirety of season 2, all the episodes are slightly sped up and slightly higher pitched. Um, it's, a lot of people call it pal pitched, uh, for some reason. Um, and yeah, which is kind of a shame, because... I don't know, it's it's hard for me, for someone who's like used to watching, you know, episodes, you know, in NTSC sound and speed, it's kind of hard um, to watch the episodes, you know, in, in their PAL format, since both DVDs are in the PAL format. Um, and so yeah, that that is kind of unfortunate. Um, another con is that the Season 2 segment, Buffalo Gals, is missing on the Season 2 sets. And, I mean, there is a reason behind it. Now, according to the Cow and Chicken Wiki, it said that the episode was banned by Cartoon Network because of its innuendos, implying that the Buffalo Gals are lesbians and its typecasting of lesbians. So if you buy any modern releases of Cow and Chicken, like these sets and digitally, I don't think Buffalo Gals is on any of these uh, releases. I know the pilot can be watched on YouTube. I'm not sure if Buffalo Gals can be watched on YouTube. I'm pretty sure it's available somewhere. And and of course, the final con for the DVDs, and this is just only for Season 1, is that there are no subtitles for Season 1. Season 2 has subtitles, but for some reason, Season 1 doesn't. So, yeah, so those were the Cow and Chicken DVDs that Mad Men Entertainment released. Um, they weren't as good as I thought they would be. I mean, of course, I like these DVDs because I just I just liked that I was able to watch Cow and Chicken again after all these years. But it's still kind of a shame that they're not really presented, you know, in a way that, you know, that the show probably should be. I mean, I already went over the pros and cons, you know, f for these DVDs. So basically, my overall thoughts on 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 these DVD sets. Um, if you would rather, like, buy the series digitally, like on iTunes, I mean, that's perfectly fine. I mean, I'd say get these DVDs if you, like, really like Count Chicken. The next Australian DVDs we're going to be taking a look at is We Bear Bears. Yes, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have no idea that these DVDs ever released. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, these are these are not fakes. These are real, legit, officially licensed DVDs. They just weren't released in the U.S. So, of course, when Mad Men Entertainment got the license to release Cartoon Network shows in Australia, We Bear Bears was one of those shows that, you know, never had any solid releases in the U.S. Because in the U.S., there was, like, one compilation DVD and the movie, and that was just pretty much it. But in Australia, they actually bothered to actually make season sets for We Bear Bears. Now, originally they came out with just season one, 
But then after that, they made this set, which is We Bear Bear Seasons 1 to 3. So yeah, so Seasons 2 and 3, they did not release them separately. They just only released Season 1 separately, and then later they just decided to make a set with the other two seasons. So of course, here's what the back looks like. There's screenshots, a description, extras. Here's the spine. And of course, here's the front cover. This is actually not the original case that it came from. Um, I actually had to replace it because here's what the original case looked like. Because when I got this in the mail, I was really, I was not pleased about the way it was shipped. So unlike, unlike all the other Cartoon Network DVDs that I bought, I mean, all of them I bought on eBay, they were imports from Australia. These ones were actually not imports from Australia. Even though they are Australian DVDs, they, I actually bought them from sellers from the US. So of course, when this set came in the mail, the case was warped on the outside and not to mention that the last disc was already loose and it had some scratches on it I mean it's probably still playable but uh, but just the, but just the fact that one of you know like the discs came loose was just I feel like not only just I mean I could also blame the eBay seller you know for you know shipping it poorly but I also want to blame Mad Men Entertainment for the packaging design of this case because the because the the disc ejection buttons you know on the on you know, on the side of the discs they're very easily I I mean it's very easy you know like for the discs you know just like to pop out for no reason also not to mention that they they have like these different designs they have two different designs for the eject button but for the pages like for example on this side there's there's like this there's like this any design that like there's like these four stubs that are like holding the discs I mean that one I mean it's easier for me you know to press it over but it's still a little painful to do that but the worst part would be this this type like this particular ejection button which is like which is like an Audi in a way this is this is an any design this is an Audi design and this one's the hardest for me you know like like if any of the discs were were in like a disc holder with that type of ejection button like it was really hard for me to get the discs off like it was really hard for me to press down and like it just wasn't just wasn't that good of quality and of course I, I, I just really I mean for a show like We Bear Bears it's such an underrated classic I like that show I expected much better packaging than this which is why um, I just went on Amazon and just bought you know I, I just bought just a generic DVD case um, it this set houses seven discs but this replacement disc actually only it can only hold up to eight discs. That's not really a huge problem. But anyways, when you open it up, of course the back of the cover has artwork of the characters and they show you what episodes are on each disc, which is very nice. There's also this artwork of Charlie on there. And of course we have the discs themselves. Like, um, here's one with the bears, here's one with uh, Panda and Charlie, here's one with the bears again, and then the bears taking a selfie, here's another disc with the bears, and another with the bears, and then finally here's one with Ice Bear, Chloe, and Nom Nom. So these are all the seven discs that are in that set. Again, if I open the last disc, because that, that was the disc that came loose. And of course, I don't know if you can notice any scratches or anything. It's not, it's not anything severe, but it's definitely, you know, 
I mean, this was brand new, sealed. Um, and, and so the fact that this was coming from, like, a sealed, like, brand new DVD, like, that was just unacceptable. So here's Wee Bear, so that was season, so that was Wee Bear Bear seasons 1 to 3. Um, here's season 4, which actually came out very recently. I think this might have been one of, this might be one of the last Cartoon Network DVDs that Mad Men Entertainment um, would ever release. Especially since they just lost the, the license recently. Of course, it's just stock art of the bears and like this one different solid colors. When you open up the the case, it has you know the series logo as well as you know more stock art of the bears. But yeah, they don't show you what episodes are on are on the set. So now that I've shown you the the DVDs themselves, let's pop in one of each disc and see what they look like. So here's one of the discs for the Wee Bear Bear Seasons 1 to 3 set. Um, yeah, there's no play all, no no like setups or anything. It's you just have the episodes. Um, and depending on the discs, you also have an extras button which has just the shorts. Honestly, this kind of feels like a DVD R, you know, like one of those manufacturer on demand, um, you know, like DVD sets that you could get only, on, you know, from sites like Amazon. Um, that's what this particular DVD set like feels like to me. I mean, the episodes play fine, um, and the menus look great, but yeah, like it's so weird how they just only just have a selection for just the episodes and the shorts, and that's just pretty much it. Um, it does play the it does play the Wee Bear Bears theme song. Honestly, I feel like the menus for season four looks a lot worse than the packaging. Um, I mean, it just looks really lazy. Um, it's it's just stock art of the bears, and uh, and everything else is just solid colors, and it just just doesn't look nearly as faithful to the source material compared to the previous Wee Bear Bear set that we looked at. Um, what's also even worse is that the episode order on these discs are backwards. So, for example, Panda's Birthday, that's a, that's like the last episode on this disc. But for some reason, it's it's the first episode on the disc. And that goes for, like, um, all the other episodes. Like, the whole the whole episode order is backwards on each disc, and I'm not a big fan of that. Alright, so pros and cons for the Wee Bear Bears DVDs. The first pro is that you get the complete series of Wee Bear Bears. The US never got any season sets, just one random compilation disc. But besides that, um, nothing really. But in Australia, you pretty much get the complete series for both DVDs. Not only that, but the seasons 1 to 3 set actually includes the shorts that aired when those seasons were airing at the time. Of course, there weren't any shorts produced for season 4, so the season 4 set doesn't have the shorts. But yeah, the shorts are included in the seasons 1 to 3 set. Also not to mention that the packaging for season 4, even though I don't like the artwork, um, I think it looks very lazy. Um, the case itself is really good, especially since, you know, it's not like weirdly designed like the Seasons 1 to 3 cases. But I definitely do think the Seasons 1 to 3 set does have a better presentation. Because even though it doesn't have a section that, you know, plays all the episodes, it doesn't include subtitles. At least at least the menus looks much more faithful um, to the show. And I also like the artwork on the Seasons 1 to 3 set better. But then again, Season 4 does have subtitles. And um, the last pro, and this is just goes for both of the DVDs, is that they're both in the NTSC format, so they play at regular speed. Now let's talk about the cons. None of the DVDs have the pilot. I'm not sure why the pilot is not on any of these sets. Again, it's just so weird. I mean, most Cartoon Network DVD sets have the pilot episodes of some of their shows, but We Bear Bears, they never released the pilot for some reason.
But on the bright side, at least the pilot can be watched somewhere online. I'm not sure if it's on YouTube or not, but I know it's on, like, Internet Archive or something. I don't know. Um, another con, and this just goes for the Seasons 1 to 3 set, is the packaging. The artwork is great, but the DVD case that originally came in sucked. Again, I had to buy a replacement on Amazon. And as for Season 4, the presentation really sucks big time. I mean, it's just stock art of the characters and just like, and just like a regular, like, and just a, a one solid color background. And it's just, just doesn't look as good and just not very faithful to the source material. I mean, I, I mean, I get why they did that. Maybe this release was kind of rushed, especially since this was one of the last Cartoon Network DVDs that Mad Men Entertainment released before they lost the license. So, I guess I'll cut them some sort of slack. Um, at least it does have subtitles, unlike the Seasons 1 to 3 set, because that one didn't have subtitles for some reason. And of course, the biggest flaw with the Season 4 set is that the episode order on each disc is backwards. And I don't know why this was the case, but it just kind of bothers me. So overall, for a show as underrated and fantastic as We Bear Bears, it kind of sucks that these DVD releases don't really do the show any justice. We Bear Bears is a show that's easily viewable on streaming services. So if you just want to buy it digitally or stream it on like HBO Max or Hulu, um, you don't need these DVDs. So out of all the Australian Cartoon Network DVDs I bought, um, these DVDs are probably the lowest point that we get here. But don't worry, the next DVD we'll take a look at is um, much better executed than these. And that is the Powerpuff Girls 20th Anniversary Edition box set. So in 2008, Warner Brothers released the Powerpuff Girls Complete Series set, you know, to celebrate the 10th anniversary. And basically, um, it, it was like this whole cardboard box and it housed six DVD keep cases, and this is just season one. And each of them had a double-sided discs. I just didn't like it. But in 2015, Mad Men Entertainment released their own Powerpuff Girls Complete series set. Um, it, the original release actually looks pretty similar to the U.S. 10th anniversary set, but instead of, you know, like, using double-sided discs, they just, both of the cases were, like, um, two discs. Um, later on, they came out with a re-release of, of the Australian Complete Series set, and it was, um, and basically, um, all, of this, all of the discs were crammed into, like, one clear uh, DVD case. And then in 2018, for the 20th anniversary of the franchise, they re-released that particular re-release um, for this. So, of course, here's what the sleeve looks like. You have great artwork of Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup. Here's what the side looks like. Here's the other side. And then here's the back. has artwork of the girls. And the background is... Townsville Town Hall. Of course, you know, here's all your, you know, the information. There's a description, as well as saying, what's weird is that they say all 72 episodes, even though not counting the Christmas special and the finale, there's only 78 episodes of the Powerpuff Girls. So, is this set actually missing episodes? Thankfully, no. Um, yeah, despite saying 72 episodes, um, the complete series set from Australia actually has all 78 episodes. I'm not sure why it says 72. Also, what's interesting is that seasons 1 to 3 are in the PAL format, while seasons 4 to 6 are in the NTSC format. So basically, the reason why seasons 1 to 3 are in the PAL format, this it's actually just because they actually gotten separate releases you know, in the late 2000s and early 2010s. And and that was pretty much, you know, the format that Mad Men Entertainment was using at the time, since Australia used the, you know, because the Australian televisions, they were in PAL. But yeah, so the, so seasons one to three are re-releases. 
you know, that already came out before. But seasons four to six, they're they're new to the complete series set, and that's why they're in the NTSC format. So of course, when you take off the slipcase, um, you pretty you pretty much just get one big DVD case, and the artwork on it is pretty much identical um, to the cardboard box from the U.S. 10th anniversary set. And of course, the there's some artwork of the girls, and you know, there's the city of Townsville. Same write-up as, you know, like the slipcover, it says 72 episodes even though there's 78. Um, seasons 1 to 3 are PAL, seasons 4 to 6 are NTSC. As we open the case itself, they don't show you what episodes are on each disc, but at least some of they do give you um, artwork. You know, for the back cover. Like, if I take out disc one, there's artwork of the girls. And uh, let's go over the discs. So, discs one and two, uh, which is, you know, seasons one, disc one and two, Bubbles. Season two has Mojo Jojo. Season three features Blossom. Season four, disc one, has... Sedusa and season four disc two has him. Season five has Buttercup and season six has Fuzzy Lumpkins. And if you remove disc two, season six, you have Pokey Oaks Kindergarten. Um, of course, right off the bat, um, the pages, so basically this, this plastic case, this DVD case is pretty much similar to the Wee Bear Bear Seasons 1 to 3 set, where they, where they all have, have this terrible, like, like, terribly designed pages, where, like, where, like, there's, like, an Innie for this side and an Audi. On the other side like I remember trying to remove the discs I remember removing like you know trying to you know remove season three and I remember like you know like the Audi eject button I pushed it in so hard but no matter how much I tried it was really hard for me you know to take that disc out and I, I pressed so hard on that particular disc that it actually, my thumb got a blister from how from how hard I tried to, you know, push the um, eject button. That just shows you how terribly designed this DVD case is, or at least like the pagers, because I feel like you should never design, you should never design a DVD case where, where like the eject buttons on the on the pages are like in this weird design. Just like the Wee Bear Bear Seasons 1 to 3 set, I also bought a replacement case for that Powerpuff Girls set. So that way I, I wouldn't have to deal with the terrible pages ever again. All right, so here is the Powerpuff Girls Australian set in its um, black replacement case. And I must say it, Honestly, it looks better in the black case. Uh, the only real downside is that you don't have, you know, I mean, you can't see the back of the cover now. You know, like the, you know, that had the artwork of the girls in the Pokey Oaks Kindergarten. But, I mean, to be honest, it, it, it didn't have, uh, it didn't show you, like, what episodes are on the disc. So it's not really, you know, something, you know, that's worth losing over. Um, at least... Uh, um, at least it's in a much better DVD case where the where the eject buttons are all the same and and they're easy for me to remove. And yeah, so here are all the discs in this new case. Um, I didn't buy this on Amazon, even though um, even though I think you can buy them in bulk on Amazon. I actually bought I actually bought them on eBay. So if you ever want to get a DVD case that houses 12 discs, 
Um, these are I mean, you can get these on eBay for like six, like six, like six to eight dollars. But yeah, and of course, they should fit onto the. Actually, crap. Um, I can confirm that the that the new case does fit into the 20th anniversary sleeve, albeit pretty tightly. So, um, so just so just be cautious if you ever decide to get a replacement case for for the Australian Powerpuff Girls set, because if you have the 2018 version that has this 20th anniversary slipcase, um, just be a little careful. And, uh, and and just hope and just hope it doesn't damage the sleeve. All right. So pros and cons for the Powerpuff Girls 20th Anniversary Complete Series Set. Uh, pro number one is that all the discs are single layered. You don't have that awful double sided discs like the U.S. 10th Anniversary Set has. And I think that's great. I feel like they should have like I feel like Warner Brothers should have done that in the first place. But for some reason, they didn't. So that's one thing that the Australian Powerpuff Girls set does, right? Another thing is that all the episodes are in uh, the proper order. I'm not sure if the order is in production or or in the order of like when they aired. Uh, because what was weird about like, you know, looking up, you know, Wikipedia and the official Powerpuff Girls wiki about like you know like the episode lists is that um, for some reason there are some episodes of the Powerpuff Girls that aired early in other countries like Australia so what I'm trying to say is is that the episodes are in order of airing at least in Australia which is sort of like the order of how the, how the episodes were aired um, in general because like a lot of the episodes that aired early in Australia aired later in the US so for example um, there was one episode f of season 3 um, it later aired in the US as part of like season 4 so yeah so in terms of like the episode orders they're pretty much in the order of when they were aired originally um, another pro is that the video quality on all the DVDs are pretty good I mean again this was another you know, 90s cartoon that was made in standard definition. So, of course, a show like The Powerpuff Girls would look nice on DVD compared to, say, regular show. I also like the presentation on the DVDs as well. Uh, the first three seasons have the exact same menus, and seasons four to six also have the exact same menu layout. Um, I'm not going to show you what they look like. There's actually already a video or two on YouTube. So if you want to, you know, search up what the menus look like, uh, you can you, know, you can do that right now. But basically, uh, seasons one, two, three are on par with the with the menus from the complete series tenth anniversary set, and uh, seasons four to six have a sort of unique menu. Um, I do prefer the menus from the seasons one to three DVDs. But I do like them both. Another pro is that uh, subtitles are included for seasons 3, 4, 5, and 6. And that almost all of the seasons play at normal speed, normal pitch. Um, except for one season, but I'll talk about that later. Um, also, all the bonuses from the US 10th anniversary set are also on the Australian 20th anniversary set. So if you're worried that like, you know, some bonuses such as the pilots and all that would be missing, thankfully they're they're all still included on this Australian set. Now let's talk about the cons, and the con would be the packaging. Um, of course the artwork is great. The slip cover is also great, but the case itself not that great. Because just like the Wee Bear Bear Seasons 1, 2, 3 set, it has these awful pages, you know, that are terribly, where the eject buttons are just terribly designed, hard to, hard to get the discs open, all that crazy jazz. So if you ever decide to buy 
this particular set. Um, I highly recommend you buy a replacement case, you know, on like Amazon or eBay. Um, another con, and this only goes for the first two seasons, is that they have no subtitles, which is a little odd, honestly, especially since um, the Powerpuff Girls season one in the set is sort of based off of the the U.S. season one release of the Powerpuff Girls, and at least that one, at least judging by the back of the cover, at least that one, at least that set does have the subtitles, so why the Australian season one does not have subtitles, that's beyond me. Also, another uh, con, and probably the biggest one in my opinion, would be um, only season two is pal pitched. And it's kind of a shame, you know, that season two uh, suffers from, you know, slightly higher pitch and slightly faster speed. I mean, especially since season two might be the best season from the show. But, uh, but at least it's still a miracle that every other season, you know, plays that regular pitch. Because, like, I mean, I was expecting, um, you know, seasons one, two, three to be pal pitch since they were in the pal format. But when I played episodes from seasons one and season three, they they all played at regular speed. So it's so strange how season two of all seasons is the only one, you know, like to play at slightly higher pitch, faster speed. But to be honest, um, I'm, I'm not as upset about that as I was with the Count Chicken DVDs because I, I do still have my 10th anniversary uh, like season two, so if I, so at least I I have a copy of season two that's in its original NTSC pitch. So overall, I definitely think that this Powerpuff Girls set is really worth getting, um, especially especially for those who already have the tenth anniversary set. I think I think the Australian set is worth upgrading because not only are the discs not double sided. But I also think the artwork looks a little better, in my opinion. So yeah, so for a show that I love so much as the Powerpuff Girls, um, this was a set that I definitely did not want to miss out, especially since um, this set was available on Amazon. It was also on eBay and Walmart, but they all got sold out. So I was really lucky enough, you know, like to find um, a listing f from a seller in Australia. He wasn't shipping it to the U.S. I, I asked him the seller um, if he could ship it, and I mean, he was thankfully nice enough, you know, like to ship it to me. So that's why I have this set and making a video about it. If we're talking about like my favorite releases, you know, that we've looked at through this video, the Powerpuff Girls would be my second favorite, and my number one, even though it's not a DVD, would be Adventure Time. So let's take a look at Adventure Time, the Complete Collection. Alright, I saved the best one for last, and it is Adventure Time, the Complete Collection Blu-ray set. Uh, this is the only Blu-ray in this video, and it is awesome. So, for someone who loved Adventure Time growing up, um, one of the most nostalgic things about Adventure Time to me, but that's not the show itself, um, it would probably be collecting the series on DVD. Because um, Warner Brothers would release the complete seasons, you know, of, of all their seasons on DVD. They made seasons 1 through 10. And I just have a lot of fond memories just going to Walmart and Target, just finding them. Since the Adventure Time DVDs pretty much um, changed the way I, I collected DVDs. And, and pretty much the whole reason why I still, I still collect physical media. As for the Complete Collection Blu-ray set, well, even though I was only collecting Adventure Time on DVD, um, they did have Blu-ray versions of Seasons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. But after that, Warner Brothers never released Season 7 or the final seasons. Um, and, and it kind of became a big problem because when Warner Brothers released the complete series of Adventure Time on DVD, a lot of people were so butthurt about the fact that there was no Blu-ray release of that DVD. But there is, only in Australia. So there's two different versions of this set. One where it's in like a big cardboard box, 
Um, it just has, you know, seasons 1 through 10, as well as a bonus disc, as well as a reissue, which is the one I have, that houses all 10 seasons on two Blu-ray cases, um, and there's no bonus disc. So let's just look at the cover. Um, the cover looks great. It's similar to the Complete Series DVD set, except um, not only is it a Blu-ray instead of a DVD, but it's also, um, the book itself is also um, in a different color. The, the DVD version is in like a brown color. This one is in a more uh, teal color. Here's what the, here's what the side looks like. And here's the back, has a description. And all the information. Um, I find it weird that, you know, that this set has a Region B icon on it. Because this set, unlike the, unlike the Cartoon Network Australian DVDs we looked at, this set is actually region free, so it can actually play on any Blu-ray player, regardless of region. And let's look at the cases themselves. So, here's seasons one through five. There's artwork of Bimo and Jake. Uh, this is from some. This is from some season seven episode. Um, I know. I know what the episode is. I just forgot the name. Um, it's the one where Mimo returns. And yeah, it pretty much has the exact same description as the... Actually, no, this is a different description from the sleeve. But yeah, season 6 through 10, the description's the same. But at least it has some um, artwork of Fiona and Cake and Lumpy Space Prints. Of course, when you open up seasons 1 to 5, um, you have the Blu-ray discs for seasons one, two, three, four, and five. So seasons, so yeah, so there's disc one, which is Finn's skull, um, disc two, which is Ice King skull, and disc three, or I guess season three, um, has Bemos's heart. And notice how the first three seasons they say A, B, and C, so the set is region free. Um, all the other discs just say region B, but Trust me, they're all, like, region-free. So, Season 4, Marceline Skull. And then Season 5. Season 5 and 6, since they had the most episodes, they they separated the episodes into two discs. Um, of course, with the DVD versions, Season 5 was a four-disc set, while Season 6 was a three-disc set. But on Blu-ray, they're both two discs. So, here's Season 5, Disc 1, which has Jake Skull. And season five, disc two, which has Jake's veins or something. I don't know. So now let's open up the season six to ten case. Here's um, here's the two discs of season six. Then there's the season seven, which has like Princess Bubblegum Skull. Disc 8, um, or Season 8, which I guess is supposed to be like Flame Princess's insides or something. And then, of course, uh, Seasons 9 and 10, they were originally, the artwork was made originally for Mad Men Entertainment. Because in case you didn't know, Seasons 8, 9, and 10, they were together on the DVD release in the US, but they were separate releases in Australia. This goes for both the Blu-ray and the DVD version. So here's season nine, which has Peppermint Butler, and season ten, which has like different like lemon grab heads. Now let's put in um, one of the discs and see how they play. Um, I'm not gonna put all of the discs in, but I thought I might put at least in season one, as well as seasons eight, nine, and ten, since they were Australian exclusive. So basically, the Blu-ray menus. For, so basically the Blu-ray menus, they all have the same layout, um, which are also pretty similar to the DVD versions. Uh, the only real difference is, is that Finn's hat does not show up until you select the episodes, or the special features, or the setup. 
because on the DVD version, um, you would just see Fence's face um, on the bottom, and yeah, and and the and the episodes and the special features and the setup, um, different menus. But since this is a Blu-ray, they're just one big main menu with sub menus for the episodes and everything. So picture the menus from the season from seasons two to six, but in this you know, layout and and their styles. Uh, the oddest thing about uh, the seasons one through six discs is that um, I, um, I did put in all of the discs on my US uh, portable Blu-ray player and, and they all and they all played. But what was interesting about seasons one through six in particular is that they they ran as if they were running on a like on like a US player because they all had like the Warner Brothers logo and everything all the previews for the US and when I but when I put them on my region free blu-ray player they ran as if they were Australian region B because they had the Mad Men entertainment logo instead that was pretty interesting but I'm gonna be showing off the 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 Mad Men original blu-rays that they released which are 7, 8, 9, and 10 so Here's season seven. The only difference between the Mad Men originals and the and like one through six is that unfortunately the episodes don't have their title cards, which is kind of a shame. Also, the extras have like its own unique menu, but the setup is pretty much identical to the to the original Blu-rays. But anyways, here's season eight. Um, this is one of the original releases from Australia. Uh, the only downside is that the episodes don't have the title screens. They don't have the title cards, which is kind of unfortunate. Here's extras, and then there's the setup. So yeah, so that is season eight. Let's go over season nine. Here's the complete ninth season. Of course, of course, some of the menus are original from the other ones because it's not based off of any um, existing DVD Blu-ray release. So yeah, there's season nine. All right, here is the complete tenth season. Um, again, um, completely original release because um, in case if you forgot, uh, seasons eight, nine, and ten are had separate releases in Australia. And yeah, so the menu is completely different. All right, now let's talk about the pros and cons for this set. The first pro is that you get the complete series in HD because in the US, season seven, eight, nine, and 10 never saw a Blu-ray release in that country. So I'm really glad that Australia at least did get the, you know, the whole series on Blu-ray. Also not to mention that all the shorts made for the entire series are on the set and there's even some other bonuses. Um, another pro is that the episodes are all uncut because just just like regular show, Adventure Time had a problem with the censors in other countries, but thankfully the, the Adventure Time Blu-ray set is uncensored. Also not to mention that the video quality is outstanding. This is a Blu-ray after all, and this was a show that was made in HD, so of course the video quality is automatically great. Um, the packaging is also great, the presentation's great, um, subtitles are included on all seasons, and the best thing about it is that this Blu-ray set is region-free, um, meaning that you don't have to get a region-free player if you plan on only just buying the set. Now let's talk about the cons. The first con is that the pilot is not on, on any of these seasons. So that's kind of a little understandable since I'm pretty sure, given that the pilot was made for Nickelodeon, I'm guessing Nickelodeon probably owns the rights to the pilot now, but I'm not sure. Another con is that one episode is missing and that's Diamonds and Lemons. However, considering that the episode is non-canon and that it's not part of any production order of Adventure Time, it was more of like a bonus episode. Um, it's fine that the episode was not included on the set, especially since the bonus disc 
is missing on the reissue. Um, the original release of the Blu-ray set had a bonus disc, which was pretty much the same as the complete series bonus disc. But for some reason, unlike the DVD, uh, Diamonds and Lemons was cut on the on the on the Blu-ray version of the bonus disc. So I'm I'm so I'm not that upset that the Blu-ray disc is not on the reissue. If Diamonds and Lemons was on the Blu-ray version of the bonus disc, I probably would have been. But since it's not, I don't care that much. Also, the last con for this set is that season 7 to 10, the menus lack title cards. So it's a little inconsistent from seasons 1 through 6. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, overall, this is probably the best release of Adventure Time, physical-wise, that you can get. And I highly recommend it, and it's definitely worth the price. Just like the Powerpuff Girls, Adventure Time is one of my all-time favorite shows. And um, the fact that we have this complete series set on Blu-ray, um, it's just amazing because I love the show. And I want to make sure that it is preserved in the best quality, best release possible. And I think the complete collection is probably the peak that we will ever get in terms of Fiscal Adventure Time. So yeah, buy this set. Mad Men Entertainment's Cartoon Network offerings may be over, but my Australian Cartoon Network collection is far from it. I'm still looking for that Dexter's Laboratory set. At least, one that isn't $300. There's also some other releases that I didn't even talk about in this video. Did you know that Mad Men released Blu-ray sets for Steven Universe? While not all of their releases were fantastic as I thought they were, they did release some great gems. It really makes me wish that Warner Bros. would put more care and effort into their Cartoon Network DVDs, because they really should be giving the CN license to Shout Factory at this point. It's still a shame that Mad Men no longer has the Cartoon Network license, because while they didn't release every single show on DVD or completed every series, they did give a lot of shows better treatment. After all, they did release season sets for Cow and Chicken of all shows. Overall, these Australian Cartoon Network DVDs are a great example as to why these shows deserve more love in the DVD Blu-ray market. These are shows that we loved watching as kids, and we want to preserve them for generations to come. Cartoon Network has had some of the greatest shows to ever come out of the 90s, 2000s, and 2010s, which is why a lot of these shows are way overdue for a complete series box set. I don't have anything else to end the video on, so I guess I'll just have to say... They really need to make a Camp Lazo complete series at ASAP.